Hey folks, Craig here at the West University Place Sewage Treatment Plant with Adrian. Adrian's gonna walk us around. Can you still smell it? Ooh, oh, there we go. Mmm, <laughs> it's in my teeth. <laughs> The main thing we have to do is make sure that we're treating the water properly. That way it kills all the nasty bugs in the water. We run our labs every single morning when we come in to work to make sure that we're still running our treatment water because you're looking at a $25,000 fine each day if you don't send out good treatable water. Once we send it out to the bayou, it comes back and it goes to the streams and the rivers and you know the equestrians and it then it goes back into the surface water treatment plants and we put it back into our bodies. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's fascinating, but then it's kind of nasty too at the same time. You know, cause you're like, oh, that's the water we drinking, you know? But it's safe, it's safe. Many years I've been working in the plant, I've, I've asked all those same questions and I've, I've learned and seen for myself, it's safe drinking water. That's why we have certain laws passed like the Safe Drinking Water Act, you know, and we have all these uh, different entities such as OSHA, TCQ, that doesn't play about our human consumption. Our plant is, is, is capable of doing two million gallons, but we probably barely do about a million gallons of wastewater a day. Harris County has way more wastewater treatment plants. And matter of fact, Harris, Houston alone has the biggest wastewater treatment plant in the entire country. In the Fifth Ward area off of 69th Street, right between Clinton, uh, over there in the Harrisburg area. That, now that, that plant there alone does 400 million gallons of uh, wastewater a day. Yeah, it is the biggest plant in the whole entire country. So Adrian, are you here alone or is there another operator with you? Well, I'm, well this is the weekend, so we, we kind of flex, but throughout the weekdays, it's four of us. We rotate on call, so this is my week on call, so I'm scheduled to work the weekend. So you are all blessed with my presence today, and I'm all blessed with your presence. How we're gonna do the tour, I'm gonna I'm take you guys to the beginning of the plant, the most stinkiest part of the plant. That's where all the little nasty water comes in. Even though we have we're probably the smallest plant in Houston, we're still the oldest plant in Houston. We still don't have a lot of stuff that's automatic. We still have to do a lot of stuff manually. And so we, we're in the process of doing upgrades. All right, if you guys would follow me, I'll take you to the stinky part. <laughs> so we always welcome people, man, who got questions and stuff, man, and who are, who curious to know about, yeah. you know, what actually goes on in the wastewater treatment plant. This is this is where our influent station is. This is this is exactly where we get all our water coming in from West U for all the wastewater. As you can see, and like we get a lot of stuff such as rags, women's personal items, toys. Oh yeah, jewelry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I haven't found no human body part yet, man, because oh, yeah. I think I'll walk away from the gym. Yeah, I think the most, un, most unusual thing is, 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 is toys. Yeah, that's yeah, because you'd be like, oh, man, that's a pretty good toy. Why would they flush that down the toilet, you know? You'd be like, well, somebody's toilet stopped up today. So I heard that a huge problem is so-called flushable wipes. Right, 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 right. We, we, we do have a problem with the rags, that, yeah. and it, it tends to clog up our bus screen. So that's why we have that rake for it. Cause I like see. I said, we're a very old plant. So our bus screen cleaner is not automatic. Yeah, we have to get right there, stand there and just rake it up. It's not the most prettiest job, but hey, somebody got to do it. Once it comes in, you know, and it goes through the bus screen, it then goes to that side over there. We have those, those screw pumps. It pretty much screws the water right, right back up and it goes up to the, to the little stream right there. You see that little gray pipe behind, yeah, behind the little yeah. plant? Yeah, it, it goes down and then it goes back up through the little scum box that we have, which I'll show you guys when we walk up the stairs. We're probably like still the only plant, <laughs> wastewater treatment plant who has those screw pumps. Everybody else went uh, submersible, so you don't smell, you know, all that poop coming in from the city. But like I said, we're, we're doing upgrades. We're getting ready to get rid of all this and we're gonna be submersible pumps as well. Did you guys see an increase in the wastewater inflow during the pandemic with more people being home and not going into work? No, not really. Only time we get a big increase is when it does a lot of raining. Okay. Uh, everything that goes into the drains okay. comes through here. Yeah, when it rains, it gets bad. Okay. It does. It gets really bad. What's that? Is that mist coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the deodorizer. That's to try ah. to keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not. But hey, trust me, it gets worse than this. It does. So we're going to go up these stairs right here. That way you can see at the end of the screw pump how the wastewater is coming in. 
we just keep one on. Just, just in case. Yeah, because who's to say if that goes out, we don't want them both to go out at the same time, you know, then we're screwed. We definitely got to keep them greased at least every two weeks because they constantly running 24 hours out of the day. Once it comes from over, uh, from, the, from the screw pumps, it then goes right here to this box. And when it comes from under, it then disperses out. And we, we keep the air going 24 hours just to keep it from, from settling. We don't want the sludge to settle at the bottom because then it makes it much more harder to treat. You know, all our poop does is become sludge-like. So that, that's why you see the water so brown, it's like that. There is no real, no, no true chemicals in the water. We don't really treat the uh, wastewater with true chemicals except chlorine. Once it, once it all disperses out and it comes to settle, we then send it over to the clarifier right here. That's, that's what we allow it to settle because then it's now finished. It's, all, it's nearly finished water. And we have a sludge blanket at the bottom. So when, And once that sludge blanket does, it has, you see the little rake arm that's spinning? It then sweeps that, sweeps that sludge that sells to the bottom. It, it's then to a little hole that's dead smack in the middle of the clarifier. And it sends it back over here to this side of the plant, which is our thickener. And then our thickener then sends it over to our digester. And, I would, and then our digester, then we, we, we drain the digester, then we dewater it, then we turn it back into the mud, and we send the mud off to become fertilizer. That's why I say everything is recycled. Yeah, except for the rags and the, yeah, all that goes into the dumpster. Our pool is fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> the people across the way, they will complain about the smell, but you know, it's a wastewater plant. What can we do? We're a small plant, so we don't use a lot of chlorine, but we do use enough to kill the bugs. We don't want to get TCEQ on us, because man, like I said, that's a $25,000 fine a day that you're sending out bad water. And right behind you is our air blowers. Those blow 24 hours a day, nonstop. They have to. We have to make sure we have some type of oxygen into the in our water as well, because if we, if we don't, it's going to make hard treatable water. We have to run our uh, dissolved oxygen test. We got to run our bio chemical oxygen demand test, all that. We have to make sure that we up to oxy oxidative standards. And like I said, it's, it's, you know, it may look simple, but it's very complex because it's dealing with a lot, a lot of chemistry. But the one thing that we have to do is make sure when we sending it out is that we, clip, we kill the chlorine in the water because if you don't, you're going to have a bunch of fish killed. Right at the, uh, the, the effluent, we have a sodium bisulfate chemical that goes into the water and it kills the chlorine instantly. And then we still have to test for that to make sure that we don't have chlorine in the water. You normally want to keep it anywhere between 0 0.03 and 0 0.07. Now if you go anywhere higher or lower, you might be feeding too much sodium bisulfate then if you if you had a 0, 0.0. You don't want to do that because you still can have a fish kill. So it's a very, very touchy situation when you're dealing with it. So this, this green outlet pipe right here is where our finished water then comes through. It goes through here and it travels and it makes a beeline straight down to the left. This is the bayou water? Yes, this is the bayou water right here. Okay, I'm gonna take you to see our BOD sampler and then we're gonna wrap it up after that. This little old green concrete right here used to be our, one of our old prehistoric clarifiers. <laughs> They've been trying to get it torn down for the last 10 years, but it's full of asbestos. It's just, it's, it's just still standing and holding on. A lot of times you see a bunch of big bullfrogs, all type of stuff in there. Hey, we even have tadpoles and a little bit of guppies here and there and there as well. To our left, this is our BOD sampling station. And this is where our finished water goes out into the bayou. This is where our BODs uh, uh, composite into. It deposits right into this little area. It takes about a good 24 hours for it to fill its entire jug up because it's constantly running samples through it. It's 24 samples all together, so that's like one each hour. We we'll allow three uh, missed samples, but if it missed more than three samples, we dump the water and we start the sample all over again. But this is TCEQ required. So we have to do this at least twice a week. By the 20th of each month, they give us all our analysis back to let us know, hey, your BODs is good, or hey, you know, you might need to increase chemicals or, you know, aerate your water better, you know, that type of stuff. When you get the upgrades, will there be a mechanical way to clear those screens rather yeah, than yes. Them? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't, we, we cannot <laughs> wait. Oh, we can't wait till they put our automatic bus screen cleaners in, because. No more we have to fight with them rags, because sometimes they'll, it'll get tugged, and we got to tug and pull, and it might fly up and hit you. Oh, yeah. No. 
Exactly. My, you know, my gross is part of the job is, you know, I was getting an influence sample and I thought I had to, the, the lid squeeze, you know, shut tight and I was holding it like that and it popped. Oh. Yeah, and it got all on my shirt and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody has fallen in? No, no. And I pray and hope I ever never have to witness that, man, because that'll be a horrific situation. If that happens, then you have, you have to go, I would say, go get you all your shots. Make sure all your shots is up to date, because, man, you ain't go from that water, man, and that's, you know, you're getting all them dirty bugs and bacteria all in you, you know what I'm saying? Well, thanks for walking us around. There was a lot of fun questions in there. Everybody, everybody loved getting an extra waft of their, uh, I guess their fellow Houstonian residents is uh, right. own. Right, yeah, our own poop, so for Our science. own poop. We just smelled your poop for science. 